All right, this is going to be the second part of my study on the sixth and seventh kingdoms of Jesus Christ. Uh, this will be on the seventh kingdom, the kingdom that is set up by the Son of God, eternal in New Jerusalem. Okay, it is not on the physical earth like the sixth kingdom, and it's going to last a lot longer than 1,000 years. All right, if you haven't watched the first study, then you need to go back and watch that one to get in context of what we'll be saying in this study. Turn first to Daniel chapter 3. I'll show you the only reference in the King James Bible to the Son of God in the Old Testament. This is a very interesting thing. Daniel chapter 3, verse 25. Daniel 3, 25 says, He answered and said, Nebuchadnezzar speaking here, the first king of the five kingdoms, he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Amazing uh, prophetic utterance there. Um, the New Versions a lot of times will change it to a Son of the Gods. Uh, that's wrong. You see, what's happening there is, if you read in Daniel chapter 2, you have the, the statue. The head is gold, the chest is silver. The, the belly or whatever is uh, brass, the legs are iron, and the feet are ten toes, part of iron, part of miry clay. And then the stone which the builders rejected comes and, and destroys that image, and it turns into chaff and it blows away, and it's no more, and the, the stone becomes a great and high mountain. Um, very deep prophecy about the Lord. And so what happens is God reveals it through Daniel, First it's revealed to Nebuchadnezzar in his dream. Then Daniel comes, interprets the dream. It's revealed to him through Daniel. And then God actually reveals himself to Nebuchadnezzar in the burning fiery furnace as the Son of God. He sees the form and it's like the Son of God. What was Jesus Christ? Son of man, Son of God. You looked at Jesus and he's a man. Like a Jewish man. Okay? in the lineage of the house of David. But his father was not a man. His father was God, not a mortal man. I should say it that way. His father is God. So Jesus could claim the title Son of Man, Son of God. And Jesus did openly say that he was both Son of Man and Son of God. Again, watch out for the Trinitarian nonsense of, of fully man, fully God. The Bible doesn't say fully man. All right, Jesus took on the likeness of sinful flesh. But... Uh, he came with the title of Son of Man. All right? And again, you have to understand the, the line of Jeconiah being cut off, and then it's Kaniah from then on, and, and the Lord says no one's going to sit on the throne after Kaniah and his descendants down. But you have a spe special line of succession that has to come down to form the Messiah, and you have Jesus is born of the woman, the Virgin Mary. He's born of her, but yet adopted by Joseph, his father. So he gets the right lineage coming down to prove that he's the Messiah, but he doesn't have a mortal father, a normal man as his father. He has God as his father, you see. So he fulfilled the prophecy about the Messiah. Didn't bring in the kingdom yet, the physical kingdom on the earth, because of what he explained in the last study. Now, I went over all the scriptures. We won't go over it again in this one. Matthew chapter 4, go there in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 through 11. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, right there, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It's pretty an interesting thing there. If you're really the son of God, if you have power over nature and creation, command that those stones be turned into bread. Turn them into bread. Come on, show me you have power over creation. And the Lord says, my word's more important than that. Hmm. Well, God didn't really care much about his written word and whatever else. He's uh, exalted his word above his name. If you don't understand that, it's because you're lost. 
Verse 5, Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, right there again, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written, Again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Oh, he's tempting my father. He's not tempting me. No, he's tempting me, because... Jesus and the Father are one. Verse 8, Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. That's what he's showing him. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Hey Jesus, let's just go ahead and fast forward the sixth kingdom here. I'll just wipe out the Roman kingdom that's you know we're in the fourth kingdom right now i'll wipe that out and i'll give it to you right now let's just cut out the middle man okay wipe out a couple thousand years of history worship me i'll give it to you that's what the romans are doing going back through all the different kingdoms that's what they all did they all worship me i give them the kingdoms you do the same i'll give it to you right now forget the cross forget all that nasty stuff you have to go through come on let's make this happen right now then said, saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Jesus said, No, I'm not going to break my word. That's what Jesus is talking about here. No. It is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. I'm not bowing to you, Satan. Your created being. I am the creator. I am the son of God. But I'm not going to break what is written for anybody. Could the Lord have taken the kingdom? Sure. But you see, then he would have been submitting to the devil, which the Lord never does. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, verse 28. And when he was come to the other side of the, into the country of the Gat, or Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Hmm. Art thou come hither to tor torment us before the time? And there was a good way off from them, and heard of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. You know, I remember a brother brought up the point, a lot of these new versions, they put exclamation marks. Go! You know, the Lord doesn't have to do that, just go. He has speaks with authority, not as the scribes do. Jesus spoke with authority. Go. No exclamation mark. And when they, heard, when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine, and behold, the her, whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. Um, two very instructive things that you need to remember. Number one, people that are possessed with devils, they can see things that are spiritual, and they'll talk about the Son of God and praising and worshiping Jesus and everything else. If you really want to see, if you're a scientist and an atheist and whatever else, atheistic scientist, you want to see proof of devil possession, find the nearest charismatic Pentecostal church and go to it. <laughs> and you'll see devils manifesting themselves and, oh, Jesus is the Son of God and oh, you know. Devils worship the Lord. Hmm. Something to think about there. Um, that's one thing to remember. Another thing to remember is that devils can go from people to animals. Better remember that one too. That could come in handy in life. <laughs> Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. 
And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. And don't tell me that was just because they're primitive or something. You'd cry out in fear too. So would I. You're there and out there and it's, you know, bad seas and whatever else. And you look and here comes some guy walking across the water. You go, ah! <laughs> You know you would. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. Again, no exclamation mark. Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. Or beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Right there. Interesting. Jesus had power over nature. Power over the spiritual world. Power over the devil to tell the devil what to do. And then he could take the spiritual world and tell them, Go. Come. Stop. That's all the Lord has to do. He's in complete control. Matthew chapter 27. You see, there were times when Jesus was here on the earth where he was showing his power and his inheritance as the Son of Man. But then there are other things which we're going over in this study where he showed his power as the Son of God, as the Creator, where he could come and he could have power over nature and say, do this. Come, go, stop, whatever. Matthew chapter 27, verse 33. And when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there, and set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross." Likewise also the chief priests, mocking him um, with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. Okay, notice what they said. If thou, thou be the son of God, if thou be the king of Israel. Completely ignorant that they were the ones that are getting him killed. Oh, if, if you're really the real thing, then you should be able to be more powerful than us. Didn't quite understand why he came to die. Because they weren't reading the scriptures. Verse 43. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now. If he will save him, for he said, I am the son of God. The thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. Uh, And about the, the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Um, what did Jesus die as? Jesus died as both. The Son of Man in the likeness of sinful flesh, but he also died as the Son of God. God shed his blood. Acts chapter 20. Feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Yeah. Next we're going to go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Verses 1 through 7. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures 
concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Okay? Seed of David according to the flesh. He was a Jew. He wasn't a white man. He wasn't a black man. He was a Jew. Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. Prophecy that Noah gave back in the book of Genesis. And declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. You see it? Son of man, Son of God. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Among whom ye also, are ye also the called of Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you from God our Father and from the Lord and, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Again, you're seeing the two there. Very important. Go next to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Trying to get there. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, down through verse 16. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, not three, and one Spirit, not the Holy Spirit, and then God the Father is a spirit, and then Jesus has, has his own spirit. That's three. Okay? Um, Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Again, God the Father consists of Jesus Christ the Son being the body, God the Father being the soul, the Holy Ghost being the spirit. That's why there's one Spirit, one God and Father, who is in you all. Okay, you can have the Holy Spirit in you. Jesus says, you know, Christ in you, till Christ be formed in you, the Bible talks about. And also, God the Father is in you. All right? It's a great mystery, but we can understand it because the Scriptures, that's what they teach. Verse 7, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the, is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Um, cunning craftiness comes from getting you away from this book. Um, that's what people do. That's what false prophets do. That's why they will just say, the Bible says, don't put the scriptures up on the screen. But they won't say, turn in the Bible. It's very important. I always have to emphasize that. Verse 16. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working and the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. Uh, okay, so keep reading there, but the point I'm trying to make is that when Jesus Christ came to the earth, he came as the Son of Man for the Jewish people, but he was the Son of God. He came and offered the kingdom, they rejected it, so it got put off for a while. But you can have eternal life today. You can inherit that. Okay? It's an important thing there. Hebrews chapter 4. You can have a relationship with the Son of God. The Son of Man is not physically on the earth right now. Hebrews chapter 4. 
verse 11. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open under the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Right here, instruction manual. This is the book. This is what you live your life by. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, Son of Man, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We have a great high priest in heaven and he knows what we've been through. Okay, high priest in heaven, he knows what we've been through. Got it backwards. <laughs> it's an important thing to remember that. 1 John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. There's a lot of very important verses in this that talk about the thing of the Son of God all right, and the eternal nature of it, the spiritual nature of it. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and every one that loveth him that begat, um, the Father in other words, loveth him also that is begotten of him, the Son. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. I mean, following the word of God, it's not grievous. It's not some kind of, oh, great, you know, I have to follow the Bible. That's a wonderful thing. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory, victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? You have to believe that. That's why the Jews failed the first time around. They said, well, we can see the Son of Man thing. We just don't believe you're the Son of God. Verse 6, This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. If you want the real deeper meaning there, you should watch my videos on the King Jesus version. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater, for this is the witness of God which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin and there is a sin not unto, de unto death. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. A big amen to that one. Verse 20. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding, and that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. It doesn't say this is one of the true gods. or This is the true God. Okay, talking about his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God. Uh, little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Okay. Um, Jesus Christ, Christ is the true God and eternal life. That's what you get right now. This is what you can have 
as a relationship, a personal relationship with the Lord of glory, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. All right, there's some idiot out there and he tried to come out and he said that I, Brian Dunlinger doesn't teach that Jesus is the Son of God. Well, of course I teach that he's the Son of God. I'd have to deny Scripture to say that he's not the Son of God. Trinitarian heretics will lie about you like crazy. I've never once taught that Jesus is not the Son of God. All right, they just assume because I say that Jesus and the Father are the same being that that means that there is no Son, then it's all just the Father. Rocks for brains. Okay, no, Jesus is the Son of God because the Scriptures say He is the Son of God. All right, uh, very plain. If you don't believe that He's the Son of God, then you don't have the Father either, by the way, because they're the same being. So, but please understand what I'm saying here. All right, He came to His own, to the seed of David, and He offers the kingdom. Okay, my ancestors, my you know ancient barbaric ancestors, the, that's why I'm born again barbarian here on YouTube. The Bible definition of barbarian in the New Testament would have been would have been the um, people of you know the the Nordic cultures, the you know Germania, Britannia, back in that time frame there, the first century. My ancestors didn't have a thousand year kingdom promised to them. Okay, it was for the Jews, the you know the throne of David. There, it's for the Jewish people. I didn't have that. But my ancestors um, served the Lord Jesus Christ, and so the Lord said, okay, um, as time went by, I'm not saying in the first century, when we heard the gospel, you know, when I heard the gospel, I said, okay, I'll serve the Lord. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. But I get in here at salvation, but I'm also going to get into this because of inheritance, because of the Lord saying, okay, now I'm going to make you an adopted son, You've come to me, you put your faith in me, I'll bring you over here and I'll give you some inheritance in that millennial kingdom. And you can rule and reign with me for that thousand years, which I'm really looking forward to. That's going to be great. Um, Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. If you remember the last study we read in Revelation chapter 1 about the description of Jesus Christ that John sees as the Son of Man. Okay, Revelation chapter 2, verse 18. Okay, now look at this. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Okay, keep your hand right there. Look over at the page at Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. Um, his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Revelation 2.18, his eyes like unto a flame of fire. Verse 15 of Revelation chapter 1, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burn in a furnace. Okay? Revelation 2.18, and his feet are like fine brass. So you have here in Revelation chapter 1, verse 13, you have Son of Man. Over here in chapter 2, verse 18, you have Son of God. Same being, same man. It's not two different beings. Okay? Son of God, Son of Man. Beautiful thing. Son of Man has a sixth kingdom, 1,000 years on the earth. Mount Zion, let's go up to the king and he will teach us of his ways. All the world worship the king. Okay? They will rule and reign with Christ for 1,000 years. Revelation chapter 20. Sixth kingdom, 1,000 years on the earth. Seventh kingdom, eternal in New Jerusalem. Uh, let's see here. Go to the next page. And Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, beginning in verse 1. All right, now here we're going to see where we transition from the fifth kingdom into the sixth kingdom and then into the seventh kingdom. We're going to see how three kingdoms transition here. All right, you have at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, so the fifth kingdom is still there. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, the question who this is, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, 
and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. So the devil is the one who's behind these different rulers throughout the five kingdoms. All right, he's the one that's there. Remember, he says in another place in Scripture, the kingdoms are given to me, and I give them to whomsoever I will. If you fall down and worship me, I'll give you the kingdoms. That's why all world leaders are Luciferians. Always have been, always will be. Every pope is a Luciferian. There's no such thing as a pope that's a real man of God. They all are Satanists, very high-level Satanists. I believe maybe even possibly seeing the physical manifestation of, the, of Satan, which is really weird to think about. But these guys, that's what they are. So the devil gives them the kingdoms. But then when the fifth kingdom ends, the Lord gets him and casts him into the bottomless pit. He gets an angel to do it, and he says, down you go, into the bottomless pit there. Verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, as we've been talking about throughout the study, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ, the Son of Man, a thousand years. Right there you have it. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. The first resurrection has multiple parts to it. All right, And there's people out there that are just... They, they try get, to get so desperate to destroy the resurrection of the body of Christ happening before the Antichrist shows up, which is Scripture. It's what the Bible teaches. I've defended that for years. People call it the pre-true rapture. It's not a biblical term. Resurrection before the catching up of the body of Christ. And they, they get so desperate to destroy that biblical teaching, and they'll say, well, see, first resurrection is right there. The first resurrection. It's at the end of the thousand-year kingdom. Okay, then uh, how are people ruling and reigning with Christ for a thousand years if the first resurrection doesn't happen until the end? All right, they don't understand that. There's different parts of the first resurrection. All right, talking about the resurrection of life there, the people that are living. Remember we read about in the last study about the resurrection of the damned. Okay, there's a resurrection for them too. All right. So the first resurrection is dealing with saved. The second resurre resurrection is dealing with lost people. How do you know? Keep reading. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. The devil's so good at deceiving people. Isn't that amazing? Because people are wicked. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Um, there is no, oh no, they've taken the city. Oh no, uh, you know, the city doesn't go anywhere, okay, in terms of, you know, uh, hey, we're going to somehow, you know, be destroyed and then we have to rebuild and whatever. No, there you go. It's, it gets burned, in other words. Um, but look at verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. There's no annihilationism there, by the way. If you compare chapter 19, verse 20, when the Antichrist and false prophet are cast into the lake of fire, they're still there a thousand years later. In chapter you know, 19, verse 20 is where they're cast in. Chapter 20, verse 10 is where they're still there after 1,000 years. They weren't annihilated. Verse 11, And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. The resurrection comes up. And first resurrection is saved. Second resurrection, resurrection comes up for the lost. And they're damned. The second death. Verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. There you have it. Okay. And that is when the seventh kingdom 
begins. How do you know that? Keep reading. Revelation chapter 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Right there you have it. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. He, singular. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. What did the Bible say there in the last study? Um, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. The last enemy that's defeated is death. He must reign till he has destroyed all of his enemies. The last enemy that's destroyed is death. And then you go into eternity. Verse 5, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life free thee. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. All right. So there you have it. Um, that's the seventh kingdom. And the sixth kingdom comes before it. So that is going to be it for the study. Um, quite a detailed study there. This part wasn't nearly as long as the first part because there's a lot more scriptures to go over dealing with the Son of Man. But hopefully you see that there's, while it's the same man, same being there, Jesus is the Son of Man and Son of God, but his kingdoms are very different. But when he sets up this kingdom, it doesn't end. It transitions to the eternal after the Lord puts an end to all the heathen out there and puts an end to death. That's the whole point of it. So it's not fifth kingdom transitioning into eternity. It's fifth kingdom transitions into the thousand year reign and then into eternity. So uh, that's how a Bible believer explains things with the scriptures. Okay. Not with my opinions, not with my feelings and whatever else. All right. And I'll just say this. The other thing that she said at the end of her comment there, if you go back to the first video and look at the comment, um, she said that the, uh, let me see if I can get this thing just exactly correct here. Um, you are correct about Rome being the worst and the most powerful, but they are the beast, not the whore. Okay, that is a Reformed theology lie. Reformed theology teaches that the, the Roman Catholic Church is the beast system. So the system is, there is no man of sin that sits on a throne or whatever else. There's no antichrist. It's just the, the Roman Catholic Church is the beast. They are the antichrist system. Uh, no, no. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church is the whore, all right? The whore sits upon many waters. The whore commits fornication with the kings of the earth. All right, very important to understand that. The beast is a man that shows up claiming to be Jesus Christ. He is the Antichrist, a counterfeit Christ. And if you understand anything about the devil, he counterfeits Jesus Christ. So you can hear a whining. That's my dog at the door out here. He wants in. But uh, so that is going to be it. Very detailed study, these two parts here. But I really enjoyed this study. It was a really neat thing, and, and uh, I love comments like that that challenge me to really search the scriptures and to put this whole thing together. It was a lot of work. So hopefully it's been a blessing to you. Um, keep your mind focused on eternal things. We have a lot of good stuff coming, brethren. Um, but until then, what we have to rely on is this book, the King James Bible. Don't ever let anybody take your King James Bible from you. Never. Don't ever give it up. That is going to be it, and we will see you in the next study. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. 
King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.